Hello everyone. This is a shortish video to make the Nokia 5110 display work with a Atmega 328P, which is a bare bones chip, no Arduino on it. And it uses, this display uses I2C interface. So let's get into it. Okay, so step one is to go and get the U8G2 library from GitHub, made by Mr. Cross, also an Arduino version, but the one we want is just the standard download from GitHub. Once you've done that, go and open up Microchip Studio, version 7 in this case, but in any case it's the same as um, Atmos Studio as far as I can tell, and create a new project. And we're going to create a GCC C executable project for this example. And we're going to give it a name of 5110, for just for the fun of it, SPI underscore test. Yeah, let's make that small lowercase. There we go. Go and stick it in the same directory as everything else. It'll create a new directory for the solution. Yep. And we're going to use the atmega 328p, which is this one. I haven't got any of those tools, so I won't have to use those. Now it goes away and creates the directories. It creates a main file, but in this case we don't need it, because we're going to use one from the example library that comes with the library. So let's just delete that one and let's go and add it straight back in. So to get here, point to the to the project folder, I suppose, right-click, add existing item, and I'm going to go to my where I unpack the library, and I want to use, for this example, AVR7, this Atmega 328p directory file because it has a hardware implementation of SPI. Now, just something to note about this SPI uses five data lines. MOSI and CLOCK are specifically defined by the chip on two particular pins. And they are part of the SPI library, which we're going to load in a minute. So then we don't need to define them here. However, the other three ports, which I mentioned before, is the chip select port, which is the slave select. This is going to be on bit 2, pin 2 in other words. And the, the data command line is going to be on uh, bit 1, port, port pin 1 of port B and same for the reset. It's on port 0, or on pin 0. Right, now, that's our, that's our main directory for now. So now we need to go back up here, add an existing, no, we're going to create a new folder first, call that CSRC, And then once we've done that, we can add existing items to it. And once again, we have to go across the AVR. Sorry, got to go to I'll get the yet. There we go. C source. Go in here. Just select all. It's just easier. Now instead of just clicking add, let's click add as link. In this case, it is not actually copying the all these files into your your project, so it's no duplication of files, but it is copying a link to them into those directories, and that adds a little bit of extra complexity later, because you've got to tell it where to go and look. But for now, let's not worry about that, and let's do the same with a hardware interface. Library which we'll call lib for 
SPI, and we'll link, or we'll add existing items to that as well. In this case, that's under the sys abr lib, that one. And we want these two files. That directory is a library for I2C, and we don't need it in this case because we're talking about um, hardware I SPI. So again, we're going to add them as a link. Cool. So now, since we have all of those, we have the main file, we have those linked. Now we need to add a couple of properties to our project. Going off again, right click, properties, tool chain. Just get all configurations, it's just easier. So we're going to go to symbols. Now, nah, let's go to directories first. So we need to add the parent directory. Give that a root directory. Random address. Now we're going to add this library, and we want to add C source, which we created a minute ago. Cool. Now it appears that we should have added, we have added all the directories that we needed, and that's good. Now we need to go to symbols. In symbols, the first most important symbol that you need to add is your CPO, CPU clock speed, which is F underscore CPU equals, now make sure that you don't put any spaces between the equals on either side and the equals, it must be hard up that way. Now in my case I've got 8 megahertz um, uh, crystal, you might have something different. And we also, just taking note here of this library that we're going to be using, you'll notice that it has, if defined, maybe I'll use hardware I2C, well, we're not using I2C, we're using hardware SPI. So we need maybe I use hardware SPI as a symbol as well because we actually want to tell it to use the hardware SPI. So we need to go back to the directories, not to the directories, into the properties and add an item. And we're going to add this maybe I use hardware SPI. And then you'll also notice that in this directory, at least in this application, this library, it, uh, it's pointed out that we need to use, we need to define the ports for the bit 5 and bit 3, which is the clock and the, and the MOSI. And uh, it's suggested to do this as minus D, and you might notice that these are defined symbols as minus D. So going back to that, just to make it simple and not take forever. And finally, the bit definition for Mossy. Cool, so we've defined all of these pre-compiler defines. And we have set up our directory structure, which matches these to a large degree, which is good. Let's just save all of that. Now if we're going to have a look at main.c, the, the, we have includes files here, which we've pointed out is here or in there. Might need to adjust those, but we'll see. Okay, let's do a project build. Hmm, something went wrong. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah no such file or directory. UGH2. Little failed. Output. Yeah. Okay, it can't find this directory. So the problem here is that this file goes off and looks for the original but it's looking at the link rather than at the actual file and so therefore it doesn't seem to work. I think this is a bug in, in Microchip Studio. So to get around that I found the easiest is to go back to the properties and in the directories here add a directory in this case to the actual folder where that um, library is kept. You can see it's the C source now in the UG master. In the same way, do the same for the lib. There we go. Let's just go back to the end. There we go. To the limit. Visit the path. So, once we've added those two, save, build, build solution. Unfortunately, it goes and recompiles everything because it's now got to go and find those. Won't be long now. So far, so good. That's great. Build succeeded. Aha! One little issue that we haven't resolved yet. Under main, one of the things you have to do in this library is to tell it what kind of display you have. And just to tidy this up a little bit so that it looks the way it usually does. This definition, I'm not using the SH1106 no name device. I am going to use the PCD85, whatever it is, that's driving this Nokia one. So where to find that? Okay, in this case we're going to have a look at the C source and the U8G2.h file and let's just do a search. PCD. We know it's a PCD driver for the Nokia 5110 displays. And we have found three of them, these three. And the one we want because it's a full frame buffer for the graphics library is the bottom one. So we'll just grab all of that. We actually should drag to the to the end of the line, but never mind, we don't actually need to copy all of that. We just need the front bit because we'll copy it directly in a minute. Copy. Paste. Right. Let's get rid of that. And we're going to make it use the same information that we had before. Cool. You'll notice here that this uses hardware SPI. And that's defined in this AVRC file that we have in the bottom here. Okay, sorry, one more compile that we've got to do. Here we go. And now, if we upload this to our chip, there 
There we go. How's that? Okay, I'm testing. And of course, just to demonstrate that it does do other things. Ooh, you can change the font, but for the sake of the exercise, I won't change the font. But because I want to demonstrate something different to that, this has 48 rows. No, sorry, it's, yes, 48 rows. Halfway along will be 24. So let's make it 30 in the Y direction. And we'll shift it across, I don't know, maybe 10 pixels. And that's going to go 30 pixels down. Anyway, so I'm trying to position it roughly in the middle of the screen. And, well, let's just do hello again for the fun of it. So we'll do a build, build solution, off we go. That should give us a compile, successful compile. We'll do a upload to the chip. Busy writing. Checks the chip is correctly programmed. And off she goes. There we go. Oh, what a good estimate that was. Fantastic. All good. And... Interestingly enough, where is it? Tell me this here. 7,500 bytes were used for this. If you delete all of these um, unused file, um, what do you call them, um, um, display descriptors, it makes absolutely no difference to the size of your, of your compiled in executable. So, I don't really bother, I just leave them all together, leave them there. Anyway, so that works. Um, beautiful. Everybody's happy. Oh, just for the, for the sake of making it complete, this file I downloaded from github.com mcu dude mini core pretty useful little diagram which gives me the pinouts for the Atmega chip and the wiring that I've applied for this particular display is PB5 clock, PB3 MOSI is dead data in, PB2 is chip enable which is also happens to be slave select but it doesn't really matter PB1 is data command or command data line and then this pb0 is reset i don't know that we actually need this pb0 file but nevertheless oh, sorry the pb0 line but nevertheless it resets then when the uh, when the chip resets so that seems to work fairly well okay i think that's it i'll try and link to maybe this uh, mini core information page um what else can I still kind of finish up with? This is my setup. I have a USB ASP on the other end of this line. It's driving this breakout board with this Atmega 328P chip mounted in the breakout board. Then the SPI um, port on the 5110 is hardwired to the port pins directly. And there we go. Incidentally, the backlight, which is connected to this line here, is when it's 5 volts or 3 volts, it turns on. And at the moment I've got the backlight off, because I didn't really need it. Well, I hope it was interesting for everybody, and useful, and have fun. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time.